Getting back on uh, lenses and uh, portrait or uh, uh, landscape uh, uh, approach, we're talking about, we're following now and uh, talk about uh, the portrait and uh, how we're going to use the focal length uh, when we do portraits. Of course, there's a, a very well known norm when we do portraits we need to use a longer lenses uh, on the camera because as wide the, the lens is it, is it we do enhance uh, the uh, linear perspective and all the lines are caught in, in the frame. So I will show you now and make a, an example of uh, doing a portrait with a very wide lens which is an 18 on uh, this APS-C camera. And a 100mm lens on the same camera. All the uh, portrait details like uh, eyes, forehead, cheeks, nose, lips, whatever, details we have on the, on the portrait, they're going to be shown different on a wide lens and on a, a telephoto lens, of course. So that's why when doing a portrait, we, uh, use this, uh, we have to use, or it's uh, uh, good to use, a longer focal length in, in a way to smoothen up the, uh, the face, let's say, uh, features and not seeing a big nose and big ears when we're going to use a uh, white lens getting close to the uh, to the uh, character. Anyway, now talking about um, uh, the ratio. The framing ratio it's uh, uh, usually uh, set in, into the camera. In the video cameras we will have this uh, uh, HDTV ratio, which is 16 by 9. But on the photo camera, we can use uh, different ratios. We can use uh, a landscape uh, uh, ratio, like doing like that, or we can use a portrait ratio. Of course, either of uh, these options are used to enhance the relation between uh, subject and the background, or just uh, feature more of the uh, portrait or the subject, uh, uh, let's say, good things like, I don't know, the relations or if you want to shoot uh, a portrait uh, in exterior shot, uh, we can also do in this way, the portrait uh, in a, a landscape uh, version or we can also do in a portrait version. I will do now uh, both of those. Of course, one of the, the reasons to change the, the ratio from the landscape to the portrait is the ratio of the, uh, the subject itself. Looking at this portrait, let's say it, of course it's very narrow, yeah? So as a composition or balance in the composition is more likely to make it a portrait position uh, photograph than a landscape. And that I will show you by doing it two versions of the same portrait. So of course the, the portrait version will be more confined for this kind of uh, subject because we're talking about a very close shot of, of a character. If uh, we'll talk about a, a closer shot with, let's say, shoulders or medium shot like we'll, we'll shoot in, in, uh, in the movies, sometimes it would be better to have a landscape uh, shot instead of a portrait. But uh, in the movies, of course, uh, this uh, standard is set and uh, we have uh, uh, fewer options than in the, in the 
uh, photo. We have a 16 by 9 like uh, we do in uh, uh, HDTV television. We have uh, one 285, which is a standard wide uh, cinema screen in the US. We have a uh, cinema scope, which is one or two, three, five. And of course, the different uh, sizes of the screens in uh, IMAX and Omnimax uh, screens, which are uh, different, sometimes are wider, sometimes are more square than uh, uh, CinemaScope 1, 2, 3, 5 or wide uh, ratio 1 to 185. Hello again, I'm uh, getting uh, further now on uh, the composition uh, topic. Composition is the base of the visual expression and therefore that's very important for what we want to say and want how, in which uh, structure we want to uh, do this. Because one of the main differences in uh, making photos, it's uh, taking the photos uh, in the landscape format or in the portrait format. The differences between those two formats are very big and the base of the uh, compositional rules are uh, of course different from uh, each one of those. If we talk about uh, landscape uh, format as we're seeing here, uh, usually it's uh, uh, very close and similar with the uh, uh, human vision uh, uh, field of view because we see the, the world with uh, uh, two eyes, the field of view is more wide than height. So we have a wider uh, perspective than the highest uh, thing. So in a way, uh, seeing the uh, moving pictures as uh, we see in the, um, the life uh, around us uh, will uh, assuming that's the, the composition on the uh, landscape format. <clears throat> Talking about the, the rules in, um, in, the, in the course, I uh, uh, detailed uh, uh, some of the rules, which from um, uh, the compositional rules, the composition it's uh, uh, set apart in the, um, uh, uh, different uh, balance or unbalance uh, composition. Uh, the most uh, common one, the rules, as uh, I, I said, is the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds it's, uh, uh, is not uh, depending on, on the format. We can apply the rule of thirds on each format we want to shoot on. Either it's a, a square, if it's a, a landscape or a portrait, we can draw the uh, thirds uh, inside uh, this composition and place the, uh, let's say, the, the center of interest or the action or the uh, character on uh, those uh, lines, which apparently are very important for the uh, human uh, ability to judge uh, equilibrium or a balance or uh, well done uh, composition. Further on, we can talk about uh, uh, the positive or the negative space of the composition, which in uh, usual uh, uh, composing space are based on um, uh, differences between brightness and uh, uh, blacks. So uh, there's a illustration of contrast. Uh, therefore, we can uh, uh, make an illustration of how will a composition, a high contrast composition will look like. So I'm sharing now the screen 
within the screen, there's a picture, uh, which is almost square. It's not uh, really square, but it's almost square. Uh, if we um, talk about uh, the compositional rules and how the composition is balanced or unbalanced here, uh, the, the artist, the photographer, tries to make a very, very um, uh, balanced composition. Either if the main center of attention uh, or the, the point where uh, the spectator or the viewer it's looking at is the thickest uh, tree uh, in this composition, which is the closest uh, tree we see here. At, uh, anyway, looking at the, the rhythm of, the, of this composition, either if it's uh, high contrast and there is a big difference between uh, whites and the blacks, we noticed uh, a rhythm which is uh, repeating, repeating itself uh, throughout the, the composition. We have two trees on the left, two trees on the right, and two in the middle. Um, getting further on with compositions, uh, we can talk about balance or unbalance uh, uh, composition and how the center of interest is uh, uh, made out of uh, uh, balance or unbalanced compositions. Here in this uh, picture, we see a lot of textures and the textures are made of uh, this uh, sandy beach and the debris, bottles, whatever, garbage. But uh, the composition itself, the, the viewer in interest is drawn by this uh, a uh, guy uh, lay, uh, laying on his back here because he's the only human we can see in this uh, composition. Either if the, uh, uh, the format, it's a portrait, is not a landscape as we expected, uh, like the one before, uh, the composition, it's uh, very, very different than a usual one because it shows a lot of uh, things altogether which we didn't expect to find on the beach with, let's say, uh, an afternoon a relaxing uh, uh, beach on um, whatever that uh, place is. Another ex uh, example of how the landscape or um, um, uh, portrait composition works it's uh, on the same artist, uh, Bruce Davidson, which is an uh, American photographer uh, who lived in the uh, uh, last century, in the 20th century. And this is um, a picture made in the uh, Bronx or um, around there in New York in the 1960s, 1970s. And it shows this um, front of a building, which actually draws the whole attention to the to the viewer to the bottom part to the bottom part because there's the only uh, difference in the contrast within the picture so the whole uh, front of the building is made of uh, uh, textures the textures of the uh, stairs windows whatever uh, we can find here people around it and uh, um, uh, whatever you can find it here, but the most different as a uh, texture within the whole composition is the group of people down here, down here, which are all uh, wearing white shirts or t-shirts, and they're all grouped together in the part of the composition, which we didn't expect to find any uh, more interesting, let's say, um, expressions or um, people around it. Uh, I don't want to insist too much of uh, on um, composition. The composition is, of course, the base of, uh, as I told you, the base of the uh, visual uh, message. And uh, therefore, we need to pay attention of all the references we want to show within the picture. 
In this picture, for, for example, uh, the, the photographer just caught the, uh, the atmosphere of the, the whole uh, the scene, which is based on um, uh, some boys, it just uh, the, the name of the picture is uh, Boys in the Cave. Uh, some boys uh, somewhere in Ethiopia are uh, staring at someone inside the cave uh, and just uh, the dust and the, the smoke from inside the cave, it's uh, showing the uh, sun rays which are uh, uh, seeing in the, in the picture. So sometimes we don't need to emphasize too much the expressions like the one uh, from the two boys here are very well seen but sometimes just uh, the density and the, the contrast will emphasize the, the expression of the, the faces, like the boys here, this one here, and this one here maybe. And um, being a, a snapshot uh, shows even more the excitement of the, those boys looking at uh, whatever they were looking at uh, inside of the composition. Getting further on, um, uh, as I told you, the reciprocity factor, uh, it's made of, uh, sorry, it wasn't that one. It's made of uh, three uh, examples. Sorry. It's the ISO, the sensitivity of the medium. It's, um, the t-stop and the shutter speed. In the photo world, we can uh, adjust the sensitivity or the shutter speed in a way to enhance uh, the move or the feeling of the move within the picture, which means in this case here, which is uh, of course uh, uh, a weight thrower, uh, sportive or sportist, whatever, uh, showing a weight, it's uh, uh, the speed it's showed through this uh, long time exposure uh, of the picture. So we can see some of the details here are uh, blurred because of the speed, the, the hand and the, the ball here. Some of the uh, parts of the picture are uh, shown uh, very uh, clear and uh, uh, focused. Uh, so besides the other um, usual uh, ways of uh, showing the, the speed or the relaxing or the quietness of the uh, of a space, we have also this kind of uh, um, way of uh, showing also uh quiet or uh, easiness or uh, wherever through the uh, speed of uh, uh, shutter speed so if it's longer uh, some of the uh, the things which are in the move are going to show another picture uh, on the same uh, uh, type of uh, shutter speed the longer time of exposure uh, the move, it's uh, blurred and uh, it's uh, very obvious the some of the objects within the frame are moving and the other ones are static. Uh, talking about uh, the composition, this is uh, a good example of uh, how uh, the artist, the photographer, composed this uh, uh, picture with uh, this uh, young uh, ballerina. Uh, uh, just resting uh, on a chair uh, within the rehearsal room. So her position, it's of course not very relaxed or doesn't look very relaxed, but uh, uh, placing her on a very uh, close uh, proximity to the, the edge of the frame uh, shows the, uh, the exhaustion of the uh, uh, the young lady, and also uh, her being 
let's say, in, in, uh, in not a such a uh, good mood after the rehearsal. <clears throat> also, the lines we're also seeing in the frame and the composition are uh, saying uh, uh, a little more about uh, her uh, uh, feelings. Uh, she's not relaxed. She's not uh, uh, laying back on uh, on her back. She's just uh, sitting uh, very straight up with uh, the legs almost crossed, which doesn't look like uh, she's very relaxed in this uh, situation. So, uh, regarding the the things we uh, want to explain or uh, show within the frame, we can also uh, use the, the depth cues. I will uh, explain in one of the videos what the depth cues are. And uh, here we can feel the depth cues uh, being emphasized by the railing here, the railing uh, of the stairs, the stairs itself, and the depth from the texture the texture which uh, the cobblestones on the road, the um, uh, cobblestones, the pavement of the, the sidewalk, and of course, one of the uh, uh, very uh, good things and emphasize here is the, the speed of the cyclist. So uh, the guy on the bicycle, of course, it's uh, riding the bicycle and we can see the, the motion blur, which uh, uh, explains uh, his uh, he's been uh, in uh, caught in the motion so it's riding the bike uh, down the road and the differences between the all the things which are very defined and very sharp very cleared in the, in the frame the railing the stairs the, all the elements around it and himself explains uh, the status of the, the cyclist is moving down, up, doesn't matter. It's um, moving on um, on that road. Now, talking about uh, positive and, and uh, the negative uh, um, balance, we can look at this, this uh, we will say, uh, a portrait of uh, Orson Welles. It was made in uh, New York. And if you notice here, it's uh, talking about the composition is very unbalanced composition, but that actually draws uh, the viewer attention to uh, Orson Welles' face because all the rests and all the other parts in the composition are very dark or dark gray. The only bright part in the in the composition is his face, and he's staring at us. He's staring at the viewer, uh, like um, saying, "What are you looking at?" So, talking about how the artist can uh, place or judge the composition, sometimes a very unbalanced composition like this one as well uh, can say more than uh, uh, a really balance or different composition like we can see or saying something like that. Of course, it's a very big difference between this one and the, uh, the actual composition, which is, uh, of course, this one, yeah? So sometimes uh, the artist or the photographer wants to emphasize something from uh, uh, the character or the uh, uh, the character of the the subject, which he, he wants to emphasize in a, in a way of the other one, and that means some of the compositional rules can be broke or uh, a change uh, because of that. Getting further on now, we can look at uh, another nice composition of uh, Bruce Davidson, which uh, in a way shows the differences between uh, a plant, which is in, uh, in the background, and 
the uh, uh, a very let's say happy moment uh, a wedding yeah the the, the uh, bride and the groom they're here in the in the foreground but the this opposition between them and uh, uh, and the the environment shows even more from uh, the status they have or the the place they are living on so as you can uh, uh, notice here the composition it's a, a kind of a twist why i'm saying that because if we look at the uh, the smoke uh, uh, towers here from the plant they're not straight up there are uh, tilts on the side as well as the, the two big uh, smoke um, pipes here they're also uh, tilt uh, to the right but this a little twisted composition it works very well with the uh, the bright uh, uh, dress which also it's uh, curved it's not uh, as a compositional uh, element uh, within the frame her dress says a lot about uh, their uh, uh moment their status their not so wealth uh, uh, family but and therefore they're doing their uh, wedding uh, ceremony here um, outside but uh, the background and the, the environment they're uh, <clears throat> they're being um, photographed on says a lot about uh, their status and as a compositional rules, we can look at it, uh, how the uh, artist framed this uh, composition. And we can notice the he didn't uh, want to choose the rule of thirds, because if you imagine the thirds, one of the third, the third is here, and the other third is here. So the, the composition of the thirds means that the center of interest or the characters were framing they have to be uh, intersecting or placed on that uh, uh, thirds here or here or here but usually on here this composition it's uh, more or less uh, uh, around made around uh, the golden ratio which is another uh, topic I uh, will explain in the, it is explained in the uh, course. Another photograph which is also made in um, at the beginning of the last century is this one with uh, the two uh, ladies. Um, walking to with the strollers uh, in Paris. Uh, again, the, uh, the moves of the, the ladies is very well uh, emphasized through uh, their um, uh, clothes being blown by the wind. And also the whole composition and the perspective as uh, uh, if you read the uh, the course you noticed the um, linear perspective which means this line here and this line here are converging on one vanishing point which is somewhere behind this window uh, this building on the the horizon line <clears throat> so this more or less it's almost a uh, uh, centered uh, composition is not that center composition Therefore, the line of the, uh, those two ladies uh, moving with the strollers uh, on the road here are more interesting than in the frontal composition, which means there will be more uh, facing the camera, uh, which uh, doesn't really show the dynamic of the, the whole thing, because the dynamics means the moving or the, the accents of the composition has to be placed or uh, divided on uh, uh, diagonals or on dynamic uh, lines, which uh, in this uh, composition are 
those lines of the strollers and with the two ladies, the uh, linear perspective, the uh, uh, aerial perspective, which means the, the fog of, uh, in the background and different contrast here, and the texture, which is different from uh, the foreground, mid back and the background. And now, at last but not least, the uh, the light, uh, latest uh, photograph, also made by Bruce Davidson, which, uh, despite the other the other photographs we've seen uh, before, it's uh, it's a very uh, centered composition. Uh, it's also landscape; it's not portrait uh, format, and it's uh, landscape because. Uh, the photographer just placed the, uh, this guy in the middle of the frame. And the geometrical uh, reasons uh, for which he, he placed him here, it's uh, his uh, contrast and the difference between his clothes, white clothes, and the background. And of course, there's another contrast uh, between his skin color and the clothes, his skin color and the background, and also uh, the, the darkest uh, black, which is here on uh, inside the uh, room, and of course on uh, his trousers. So uh, even if it's a, uh, we, we can say it's, it might be a bored composition, but, um, the, the feeling and the expression of the people, though, of the guy uh, who is being photographed here, uh, tells a lot about uh, his status, his, uh, uh, let's say, his dreams and uh, what he's doing here for, for a living. Obviously, he's not doing very well. Uh, the, the era which this uh, photograph has been uh, done, it's also around the... Uh, uh, 70s or 80s uh, on the last century, so 1970s, 1980s. Um, this was just uh, uh, an adding uh, part of the um, composition on uh, the videos uh, we're going to uh, share on the drive. So look forward to see you all in the classes and uh, have a nice uh, next week. See you then.